Hello and welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly round of all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. It's in here. And this is Becky. All right, well, let's get to it. It's a 101 wow. issue. And Nikon apparently made an announcement. They the, did. The official announcement of two lenses. Mm hmm The lenses that we knew were coming. Exactly. They say we are developing and now they're ready for release. Which is great. So first up, we have the 85mm f1.2. You will have seen our brief announcement video, possibly, uh, where we went into the specs. But just to recap very quickly, the specifications of the 85 1.2 are that it consists of 15 elements in 10 groups with one ED, two a spherical, and a nano crystal coat, as well as 11 diaphragm blades for that lovely bubblicious bokeh. Then we have an 85 centimeter close focusing distance. It weighs 1160 grams, so that's 1.16 kilos, which is not light, we'll be honest. Yeah, for comparison though, 51.2S, which is about the same size and weight, weights 1090 grams. So we're talking about 70 grams difference. Yeah. So if you handle the 50 mil lens, you pretty much know what to expect from the 85. That's right. And then it's got an 82 mil diameter front filter thread. It does have weather sealing and also all the lovely custom function ring, lens function button, all that kind of customizable stuff that we've become accustomed to with these Pro S line lenses. So this is very obviously a professional portrait lens. That's that's where they're going with this, right? Yes, nothing spared, no expense, no compromise or anything. So it's a big, chunky, heavy beast of professional gear that we portrait photographers will salivate at because it is pretty much probably the best 85 on the market. Yeah, I can see this being used for uh, amazing wedding photography and also stunning both studio and location portraiture. I reckon that fashion and beauty are going to be right up there with the list of photography genres that we're going to see this one used at. Anything else? Well, low light shooting, basically. Mm. Yeah, again, for wedding photographers in poorly lit venues, that's going to be quite good. Paired down with the fast watch focus of Z9, that will create a really good quick separation of the background. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, pretty much if you're a portrait photographer, you need that lens in your lineup. My, my question is, well, if you got 85 14G, like me, would you switch? I mean, the price it's at and the price of 85 14G currently, and obviously it's a much older lens, the price went down already. Mm -hmm. It looks like a big saving over the price of the new one. I personally can't afford the new one. Like, if I would have the budget, I would probably go for this and basically job done. It's your lens for the next 10 years, basically, you know? Yeah. But, but, just looking at the size and the weight of things, I'm just looking at H5 1.4G, which I have. Okay, it's got nine blades versus 11 blades on the new one. Mm -hmm. So the bokehlicious bokeh should be even more buttery mm -hmm. on the new one. Yes. However, mine weighs 600 grams. Right. So, which is basically half the weight of the new one. Yeah. Once you add the lens hood to the lens as well, it will become even bigger. It will. Is that going to be quite a chunky thing to tote around? I can see it working quite well for studio photographers, mainly because they don't have to venture very far with the equipment. For weddings and events, I think it would be absolutely beautiful, but you are not carrying many other lenses with you if you're going to take that because that is very heavy. I always favoured the 105 1.4 for that kind of work the 85 is a beautiful focal length probably a little bit more versatile as well but it is just so darn heavy <laughs> yeah and again it's it's one of the things that i think it's important to have this lens first of all it's very important to have this lens and you can line up as a native z lens so yes if you're a professional photographer looking to switch this is one of those lenses that if you use this type of focal distance you need to get one of those and the problem what I have with it is literally a bunch of photographers who would like to have an H85, mm -hmm. who think that H5 1.8 is not good enough for them. And it's a great lens in its own 1.8 aperture, but I do feel like that we definitely need to have a, a small wide 1.4 lenses that are going to be a little bit cheaper, a little bit smaller and lighter, sure. because it's nice to have no compromise. It's absolutely fantastic that Nikon does that. But we also, I think, need a middle ground. And H518 is not a middle ground for me personally. Yeah, I think it would be very interesting to see if they bring out an 85 
1.2 as this one is and they've done a 51.2 and let's say they do a 135 which will probably be an f2 or something like that and then they do a series of 1.4 lenses they do an 85 1.4 yeah. 50 1.4 which is somewhere in between because also there's a steep price difference between the 518 and the 8518 bobbing sort of under 700 pounds yeah uh, the 50s a little bit cheaper than that still and then these over two thousand pound, sort of close heavy, to three thousand pounds. Yeah, pounds. heavy hitting lenses. There's got to be something in the middle. So I'm in agreement with you. I would be interested to see what what Nikon think of that strategy of doing a 1.4 yeah. line. Do you want to ask your uncle? <laughs> Absolutely. I think to conclude that thing. So instead of making people angry at me saying that this is not the right thing, it's not the right. It, it's a right thing for them to do that. Yeah we still have a gap. That's what I'm trying to say. And it would be interesting if Nikon can address this, maybe not urgently right now, but maybe next year or so. Mm. It also seems to me that maybe Sigma Bill would fulfill that gap. And again, maybe I would have to think hard yeah. switching to 1.4 Sigma Z lens instead of, let's say, a Nikon one, because I do like my Nikon lenses. Yeah, if they did an art, maybe that's something worth considering. Yeah, but no, in art, they're also going to be huge and heavy. Yeah. And... <laughs> That's why I feel like the gap is there, but obviously it is wonderful that Nikon has H5 1.2 on the market because it's not just a statement of we releasing the best glass on the market, but we also need to think about a bunch of photographers who can't afford that because we're starting to get in the prices of those exotics, maybe not the 2.8 exotics, but 4.5, 6.3 exotics. Sure, yeah. And it can become a lot for a lot of people. Now, let's talk about 26 mil. Yeah, the pancake is a lovely little lens and something that we've been hoping for for a while because it is a metal mount pancake lens and it's truly pancake in that it's only 2.5 centimeters in height mm -hmm. off the camera body, which is incredible. It's also only 130 grams. So this is a little bit like a heavy lens cap <laughs> in your pocket. Yeah, you pretty much have it on your Z9 body and then you take your H5 out, just swap mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And you just don't feel that lens in your pocket at all. Yeah. And also the other thing that I like about this one over the previous pancakes that they've brought out or um, not quite pancakes is apart from the fact that 28 2.8 and the 40 f2 are not metal lenses they also couldn't fit any kind of lens hood or anything on them so this also has a lens hood which is supplied and keeps the size down really really small and allows you to put on a 52 mil filter thread onto this lens so really the perfect kind of street street life walkabout reportage sort of lens with seven aperture blades eight elements in six groups and three of them being a spherical yeah, I'm just thinking it's a very luxury body cap lens. We've just filmed the review on 18mm 7 arch sun lens that's been announced last week. Which is a DX lens, so very different. It's a DX, but it's also maybe half the size of this. Well, 26 is obviously tiny. And that one costs $60. Yeah. This one is a lot more expensive, but then, first of all, the build quality is going to be better. Optical quality is going to be amazing. It covers a full-frame sensor. So as a body cap lens, you can just have it in your pocket, Again, street life photography set up as something that is very discreet. Even with something like Z6, it's going to be very discreet. I do want to have it, let's say, on the full frame ZF, whatever it happens, you know. But I think for one of those things that where you have a 28 mil full frame 2.8, which is cheaper than that and just a little bit bigger, and then you have this one, which is basically almost the same lens, but on steroids in terms of construction build quality. Yeah. You know, so, and obviously the time will tell what's the optical quality is between the two. So you have now options for your, let's say, street life, wide angle type of shooting where you have your small pocketable prime lens to take away with you on a full frame body. Yeah, the 26 mil being the price that it is, is not quite, but almost double than the 28 mil. So do bear that in mind, but let us know if you think this lens is for you. If you're planning to get one, pop it onto your, whether it's a, a ZFC or a Z6 II or a Z9, whatever you've got, let us know what you think. We'd be very interested to hear your thoughts on these two lenses. Fantastic. Let's move on to another Nikon announcement. Nikon just announced its first 60 megapixel camera. It is called DigiSide 50M Monochrome. Wow. All right. So this camera is not for you and me. It's for manufacturing. And it's basically a monochrome microscope camera for conducting high precision analysis and large volume sampling for use in applications such as touches, wet plate screening. 
I have no idea, but cool. So I honestly couldn't tell you more about it, but we will tell you some of the features. It says that it efficiently captures 60 megapixel high res wide field of view images. It has increased fluorescence sensitivity of 1.5 times and captures high speed events with the reduction of sample damage. And it has something which I don't know what it is, but is called Improvex workflow with integrated software and automated analysis. So I assume the camera comes with the software that helps it to figure things out. But mm -hmm. basically, they say during the drug discovery research, efficacy is required through high throughput screening. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Kind of, yeah. So they want to make sure that basically as chemicals and compounds are being looked at, that you can make sure every element of it is absolutely perfect. Yeah. So it basically helps them to select and also evaluate the chemical compounds. Right. Fancy. Yeah. First 60 megapixel camera from Nikon. Z8 could be next. It could be. That's the only reason I put this news in there. Uh, yeah, because I realize it's a 60 that. megapixel sensor. Exactly. So I saw you joke, the rest doesn't matter. You know, the punchline is there. <laughs> All right. So now let's move on to some rebates. So Nikon started rebates in the United States. There's a bunch of cameras and lenses that people you'll get discounts off. For example, something like Z7 Mark II gets a hundred dollars off if bought in the kit. So if you're looking for the camera right now, then February is your month. Now, there's a rumor that on February 16, Nikon Europe will introduce a 10% discount on all lenses except the lone exotics. Is that true, Becky? You can't ask me that question. <laughs> You are, Bindi? Hey, yeah, I can't answer that question. Yeah, so who knows? 16th of February is, what, a week away? Yeah. Or two? Yeah. So if you're in Europe and you want some discounts on lenses, watch this space. Absolutely. Then they... Check us out next week. And if they are, we will definitely mention that. Now back to United States. Nikon have started a 30-day trial program for Nikon Z30 camera. What it does, you can purchase a Nikon camera from a Nikon store, have it for 30 days, and if you don't like it, you can return, they'll give you full refund. That's how confident they are in this camera. It's pretty magical. So this includes the Z30 with one lens kit, two lens kit, the one lens creators kit, or the two lens creators kit. So you can pick or choose whichever one you want and try it out worry-free for 30 days. If you're in the United States and you'd like to take advantage of this offer, we will include a link in the description box for you, but it is on the Nikon USA website at products forward slash home dash trial. Go for creators kit because you're a creator. Yeah. Now to Japan where <laughs> Nikon Z9 <laughs> is in top five of best selling cameras in Yodabashi Camera, who is one of the biggest camera stores in Japan. Fantastic. Yeah, we love to hear it. Camera. That's what it was. In my head was the theme tune. That's excellent. Um, now, some more Z9 news for you. So the Enroll Lab test for firmware 3.0 rolling shutter dynamic range and latitude by Cine D. Yeah, all those important things that we care about when we buy the camera. So what is their summary, Becky? So they did some tests and their summary is, with the inclusion of internally recorded NRAW, the Nikon Z9 really makes a huge leap forward. Not only does it show strong results in rolling shutter performance as it did before, but it's now also capable of recording 8.3K 12-bit up to 60 frames per second. As expected, NRAW is noisier because not so much internal signal processing is going on, leading to lower IMA test results of 10.2 stops at a signal to noise ratio of 2 and 11.9 stops at a signal to noise ratio of 1. I don't know what that means. Are you still here? Mm. That's good because there's more of that. Yeah. So next up, looking at the latitude results, the 12-bit combined with the power of raw in terms of exposure adjustments make all the difference. Combined with the power of raw. Raw in, raw in capital letters, of yeah. course. Two, if not three stops more latitude compared to 10-bit H.265 recording, bring it to the top of the list of full-frame consumer cameras with eight stops of exposure latitude with wriggle room towards nine. Nikon has come a long way with the video features on their photo cameras and it shows. And if you haven't fallen asleep and you'd like to read the rest of the article, we'll include a link in the description yeah. box for you. So a couple of thoughts. It's published by Cine D, who specializes in the videography side of things, of DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. So Not Sunny D, the um, 
orange juice. Exactly. Okay. And not Cine D850. I can tell you that much. But I think if you are a videographer and you were considering Nikon system, which for a lot of videographers, they kind of, I think, undervalue mm. Nikon and its capabilities in video space. So it seems like those tests just show how important this camera, not only for Nikon, but for a lot of videographers who are getting into the space and having an internal RAW and 8K capability at this price, it's pretty good for videographer type of use. Now, there's more interesting things. There's a forum going on on DP Review where people try to get a serial number progression on the production numbers of Nikon Z800 6.3 lens. So apparently the serial number of that lens begins at 2000, 2001. Amazing. And now the current tally is 2000 and then 57 and whatever the numbers is. So if those things are correct, it seems that since the announcement, Nikon shipped 3,700 plus lenses. That's a lot of lenses and the lens is still on back order. <laughs> it's good though. I mean... It means that around 3,700 plus of you bought this lens. Yeah. So now let's move on from some internet facts to anecdotes. We have a Chinese spy balloon that was hovering over the United States mm. last week has been filmed with Nikon Z9 and 404.5 lens. Apparently they filmed the way it was shot by the airplane. Wow. If you want to see that video, it's on Instagram. We provided the links below. I also linked a soundtrack for this video, which is 99 Luft Balloons by a German rock band. It's a na, great song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now to another anecdote. Nikon Rumors came up with an article saying Nikon will allow third-party lenses only if they're complementary to the Nikon lens lineup. The reason why it's an anecdote, because it starts with the following. I was told that Nikon will officially license third-party autofocus lenses for Z-mount only if they complement Nikon's current lineup rather than compete with the existing Nikon Z lenses. I've heard that before about three or four months ago, I think. Um, it's been said by pretty much everyone but Nikon rumors. I think we've said it, but not that we've been told it. Just that's our speculation. So maybe Nikon rumors was told by watching one of our videos. Or maybe they read Tom Hogan's article. Or maybe that, yeah, because there's also good old, good old Tom, our mate Tom, who has said that before and that seems like a logical thing for Nikon to do why would they allow another company if they've got this license why would they allow them to just yeah. willy-nilly create yeah. I mean it's a, it's, a question, it's a question is obviously you can have a free market mm -hmm. yes yeah, so full-on kind of blown capitalism where everyone can compete and come out with things they they can then you obviously have an Apple type of curated mm -hmm. market or app store where they don't allow everyone in. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we can have five versions of app that does the same thing. Yeah. So the question is, I personally think from Nikon's point of view, okay, you can allow Tamron and Sigma, which are the big third-party manufacturers to produce anything they like. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, that won't hurt Nikon. As I said, if Nikon released that H5 1.4 lens, I would buy a Nikon lens over Sigma one. Yeah. You know, because I prefer Nikon lenses over. It doesn't mean the Sigma lenses are bad. It's just I would prefer Nikon lens over it. So I don't see a personal, personal competition. I personally think that when you start to limit the market, it's also not a great idea because then maybe some manufacturers will decide, well, if I can only release two or three lenses out of the 10 that I produce from other, let's say, mounts, is it worth it for me, if you see what I mean? Yeah, it, exactly. I understand that logic. So we, we kind of already have seen this pattern with what Nikon have officially licensed, which is the Tamron 70 to 300. And of course, the lovely, for example, Voigtlander or Fuchtlander manual focus lenses, because they're not in competition with anything Z and, you know, it's kind of a free for all with those. Sigma have said to us in the past that they do not want to reverse engineer anything. They want an official license from Nikon before before they start to produce any Z lenses. And that's the way they've operated since they were producing lenses for Nikon way, way back and Leica and Fuji and everyone else. So I definitely respect their decision to do that. And I hope that when that licensing does come through, that whatever they 
managed to get approved or authorized is stuff that really fills those gaps that we've been talking yeah. about and that yourselves, our viewers, have been talking about in our comment section. So anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do produce. I'd be intrigued to see what Tamron lens comes next because obviously we've already got one. So I yeah, imagine there will a be another one. 180. <laughs> with a Tamron badge on it. And I would be very, very interested to see where we start with the Sigma lineup when that eventually happens. But where do you stand as a Nikon user? Would you like everyone just to release everything they have for the Nikon Z mount? Or would you like Nikon to curate a specific third party releases for you because they know better? Let us know in the comments below. And on that cheery note, let's move on to some corporate news. Nikon's technology and design blog published an article called something really long. The further development of society through semiconductor manufacturing, Ooh. semiconductor lithography systems that pave the way to super smart society. So this article goes into their vision of 2030 and how semiconductors are very important in your life. It's pretty much like five a day thing. But because semiconductors are everywhere, not just in Nikon imaging division, they say that by manufacturing the semiconductors to go in all aspects of your life, you won't even notice how they're around you in 2030. Yes. So moving on from semiconductors to the buyback of its own shares, yeah. you'll be pleased to know that Nikon continue to buy back its own shares. Exactly. Did you know they bought 2,456,000 of their own shares in January 2023? 20, and that makes it 17,561,000 shares, which is equivalent of almost 25 billion yen. That's a lot of yen. And from our point of view, it's good that Nikon is buying their own shares because it seems like they're confident they will develop enough progress to push their stocks and share price to a higher level. Indeed. Yeah. Moving on to some third party news for you. As we mentioned earlier, Seven Artisans have announced a new 18mm f6.3 Mark II lens for the Nikon Z mount. And not only can you see all about it in the description box, but you can also find our review on our YouTube channel because we were sent a pre-production model and we tested it out. All right, let's move on to review section. So Photography Live published two Nikon lens reviews recently. So the first one up is Nikon Z800 f6.3 VR lens. Yes, and they liked a lot of things about it. They said excellent optical performance in terms of vignetting, distortion control, chromatic aberration, and still very sharp. Good autofocus, excellent build quality, um, advanced weather sealing, and also the fact that it was remarkably small and light for a lens of this focal length with a competitive price of $6,500. Now, the cons were a little bit strange. Some of them are, are completely valid, I think, but Bokeh can be very distracting with backgrounds uh, that have specular highlights. Mm -hmm. Sharpness not as high as the $10,000 equivalent 800 5.6. So fine, I'm kind of taking that with a pinch oh, of salt. Oh, wow. It's, it's not as good as the more expensive lens. Shock. Yeah, This shocking. is my face. You remember that face? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Close focusing distance of five meters, which can be a bit limiting. The fact that 800 mil is kind of a long focal length, <laughs> the 6.3 aperture. Oh, yeah. well, that's, that's definitely a con because, yeah, like you bought the lens and oh, it's too long for me. And the Arca Swiss not compatible. The foot, most important Which one. comes up every single time yeah. and we've talked about this plenty, so we won't. But they do say my favorite thing about the 800 mil is how light and portable it is. Even though I usually use lens on a tripod, I was able to set everything up, take it down, run around to different locations much faster than with other exotic super telephotos. After Nikon's huge 800 mil FL, I never thought we'd see a professional hand holdable 800 mil lens, but here we are. Technology. Mm. Then we had Nikon Z105 f2.8 VRS micro review. And what they say is basically it is one of the best macro lenses on the market right now. And frankly, one of the highest performance lenses in general. Very few lenses match the sharpness, bokeh, chromatic aberration, distortion, and flare performance of Z105 micro lens. It is a beautiful lens. I can definitely vouch for that. The only things that they didn't like was the fact that the focus by wire function is not ideal for manually focusing with a macro lens. Makes sense. Doesn't work with Z converters, which is a shame because the F mount version did work with converters. True. There's no distant subject only on the focus limiter switch. So rather than the old school style limiter switch on F mount lenses where it would be, you know, distant subjects only or full focus range. We have close subjects only or full range. So it would have been a nice addition to have 
another setting on that switch, which I hadn't considered until that. And they said that they would have preferred a longer focal length for skittish subjects. We're kind of hoping that there might be a 200 one day. Yeah, that would be nice. Would Absolutely. Be Some dragonflies would be amazing than that. So what they say is basically at the end, considering all above, it's not a surprise they this lens gets a highest rating from which is five stars and it's only second lens to achieve so you know mm. what was the first one what was the first one z 1424 2.8 lens wow so there you go if you got both those lenses you're two for two no other brands no is that little humble brag right there you've chose the right system there you go mm. <laughs> well done now for your weekend read and watch segment so we have bird photography sharp photos pro tips using the best camera settings for wildlife nikon z9 by matt shannon yeah if you're a bird photographer if you want to learn some tips and also focus settings that would be the video to watch and the last video of the week we have a nikon session episode three with richie it's called how does peter lindbergh style live on that's right. And in this third episode, Rishi is joined by Tara Florence and Harry Skeggs as they discuss how Peter Lindbergh's style lives on and how he influenced their work. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching us this week. Yes, thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please give us a like and a subscribe if you're on YouTube. If you're listening on a podcast platform, could you give us a rating, a review, possibly a what else can they do? Everything. Give us everything. Oh, you can follow us there too. Yeah, absolutely. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, and Spotify Podcasts as well. That's right. And if you'd like to find us on the interweb, you can find us on Instagram at Rebecca underscore Danese, the shop at Nikon at Grays. And I'm at Constantine Koshkin. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Fantastic. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching us. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just like, how the hell are you going to cut that? I don't know. This this is like a train wreck of a podcast. It's going to be so much. So many bloopers. Oh. <laughs>